وتنحت جسمك الساعات نحتا وتدعو كالمنون دعاء صدق ألا يا صاح أنت أريد أنت أراك تحب عرسا ذات خدر أبت طلاقها الأكياس بتا تنام الدهر ويحك في غطيط بها حتى إذا مت انتبهتا فكم ذا أنت مخدوع وحتى متى لا ترعوي عنها وحتى أبا بكر دعوتك لو أجبت إلى ما فيه حظك لو عقلت إلى علم تكون به إماما مطاعا إن نهيت وإن أمرت ويجلو ما بعينك من غشاها ويهديك السبيل إذا ضللت وتحمل منه في ناديك تاجا ويكسوك الجمال إذا عريتا ينالك نفعه ما دمت حيا ويبقى ذكره لك إن ذهبتا هو العضب المهند ليس ينبو تصيب به مقاتل من أردتا وكنز لا تخاف عليه لصا خفيف الحمل يوجد حيث كنت يزيد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعلى من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I'm your host Kareem Abu Zaid and this is another edition of the Maqasidic Tafsir pursuing the higher aims of the Quran, of the chapters of the Quran uh, is a type of Tafsir, brothers and sisters in Islam which is uh, based on the other uh, uh, Tafsir like the Tafsir uh, al-Tahlili, wa Tafsir al-Mawdu'i, wa Tafsir al-Lughawi, wa Tafsir al-I'jazi is simply trying to uh, uh, reveal uh, an objective uh, of uh, uh, the chapters of the Qur'an and assemble uh, the uh, uh, pieces, the uh, individual verses in light of this higher aim and uh, the idea behind it is uh, what message uh, this chapter uh, is uh, broadcasting is conveying uh, and hopefully through that message we can uh, uh, create actions we can uh, come up with uh, progressive executable uh, steps uh, so the Quran uh, becomes uh, life in our lives. Uh, the Quran becomes part of our lives, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, first of all, uh, if someone can kindly uh, give us a call, because like I said, today I'm at CMCC, at Dar Tawheed. Uh, the number is there, 303 uh, If we just can get somebody to call to make sure that the sounds is okay and the uh, picture is okay because I, I'm just concerned I'm not sitting on my every uh, time studio here at home uh, so I'm just I just want to make sure that uh, you guys are uh, hearing me well uh, and also uh, uh, watching me okay uh, with the internet uh, because we uh, uh, boosted our uh, Wi-Fi here uh, at the office and hopefully this will because I, I used to shuttle back and forth and, and that was not very um, uh, helpful. So if someone can call uh, 303-500-5101, uh, please, uh, just to let us know that the uh, sound is okay, as well as the picture is okay. Uh, so this way we can carry on, inshallah, with the uh, broadcast, bi ta'ala, brothers and sisters in Islam. Okay, let me see here. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Are we looking? Are we looking good? 
Sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is always a 15 second split between the actual and the uh, broadcast. So as long as you're watching the higher aim, the virtual higher aim, the Maqasidic Tafsir, and you're watching me, then that's good news. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Excellent. Okay, so let me uh, welcome uh, those who always uh, take the time to uh, uh, show up early and uh, sign in. We have Sister Sarah, uh, I think Sister Sarah from Saudi Arabia, good to have you back. Abu Bakr Muhammad from Houston, uh, Texas, good to have you. We have uh, Brother Isa from Mississippi, good to have you Brother Isa. Uh, I think Sister Um Muhammad from Riyadh, uh, and we have Rahima Taylor, uh, our local sister here from Colorado. And we have Janiat Aismatu from Ireland. Uh, mashallah. And we have Alva Zahra. Uh, I don't know where you're from, but uh, if you can let us know. And we have uh, Tears of Snow all the way from Netherlands. Uh, we have Muhammad Hisham. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad. Uh, all of you, by the way, say, all of you said Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I don't know where Muhammad Hisham from. Uh, like I said, yeah, I, I like to create that virtual family uh, because I see the same names. Uh, so it would be nice to uh, to to let us know where you're from. It, it helps, uh, inshallah. Uh, Yaqub, Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we have Abdi, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have Imam Bukhar, Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Sister Samira from uh, New York. Uh, so the, uh, you are too close to the camera. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I think I'm going to have to work on the setup. Inshallah. I'll try to do that. But this is the best I can do. You see, if I zoom out, then the uh, the background is not going to show. You're going to end up with a an ugly background. and uh, so. But we'll fix that. Inshallah. We can work on that. Sister Um Muhammad. Uh, Hamza Pubal. Uh, good to have you, Brother Hamza. Our local Hamza, I guess. Uh, Okay, we have Ziba Hafid, we have Saran Jabi, uh, Yasir, wa alaykum salam Alva Zahra from Kansas City, Missouri, mashallah, I used to live there for a while. We have Muhammad Hisham from United Arab Emirates, good to have you, Muhammad. And we have Abdullahi, good to have you. We have Shahbana, salamu alaykum. We have Shahbana Afar from India, uh, Isa Sharif, salamu alaykum. We have Milad from San Diego. Uh, I, I know I'm too close. I think I can't see the zoom is, is too much. Uh, but you see, uh, we're trying to get the background. So I'm, I'm trying to, inshallah, maybe next broadcast will be good, inshallah. Okay, without any further delay, uh, uh, let me just add a couple of more here. Sarah Saran is from New Jersey. Uh, Sophia from Tanzania. Mashallah, good to have you. Uh, we, we're more of an international uh, class here. So uh, without any further delay today, brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, we are having a beautiful chapter, uh, the chapter of Surah al -Nur. So this is the type of tafsir that we're doing, uh, uh, just for, uh, because we're broadcasting this as well to the uh, uh, Islamic Online University, uh, and we do have a lot of students, and, and some of them may be not familiar with this style of tafsir. Uh, this style of tafsir was, uh, uh, in a way, uh, present uh, within uh, the classical sciences of, taf of tafsir. Like, you know, the, uh, uh, the scholars of tafsir of the past, like Ibn Jarir al-Tabari and Ibn Kathir, they always said, وَالْمُرَادُ وَالْمَقْصُودُ وَالْغَايَةُ They always use this language. Uh, uh, and the intention, and the purpose, and the aim, and the objective is so and so. So it was inclusive in the uh, uh, previous uh, 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 trends of tafsir. 
So what we're doing is we're trying to make it exclusive. You're getting that? So that trend of tafsir was inclusive uh, within the previous tafsir. But my intention is to make this uh, uh, simply uh, uh, exclusive, not inclusive. So based on evidence, based on certain criteria, uh, and by the way, the, the first volume of my Maqasidic uh, Tafsir, which will have uh, a big introduction to the Maqasidic Tafsir and how uh, scholars derive uh, or reveal uh, the methodology of revealing the, uh, the higher aim and, and the criteria, because you can come up with a higher aim that is not uh, uh, accepted in Islam. That, like, for example, you can come in and, and say, and I think I said this last week, you can come in and say, you know what, the higher aim of this chapter is to spread democracy. <laughs> then get out of here. So th the higher aim has to be within the higher aims of the Qur'an. The Qur'an came to guide. The Qur'an co came to invite to Tawheed. The Qur'an came to give glad tidings to the believers, uh, warning to the disbelievers. So these are all higher aims, right? So uh, the higher aim which you uh, uh, come up with, because it's a matter of ishtihad. You see, I see this chapter's higher aim to be this. Maybe another student of knowledge like myself may actually come up with a different higher aim. But as long as we follow uh, the methodology uh, of doing this and it is accepted, uh, we're all fine. So uh, I don't want you to assume that this higher aim uh, is something that is revealed. No, it's a matter of ishtihad, a matter of ra'i, a matter of opinion, but a valid opinion because it does not negate in no way it negates the uh, higher aims of the Quran. طيب, uh, again, I have to throw that introduction and, and, and every now and then, inshallah. Uh, but let's get into Surah An-Nur, uh, which is chapter number 24 of the Quran. Uh, and uh, the uh, higher aim which I, I came up with, the light of morality, subhanAllah. So the surah is called the light, the nur. Uh, now the focus of the of the light here uh, is on morality, morality, brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, Subhanallah, you, you probably uh, uh, watch that some of you watch that show that I had with the uh, lady uh, by the name of Brenda uh, Lipsack about what's going on regarding the, the morality in uh, in the world and and and, and what's going on. And it's really something that 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 really uh, alarming, hundred percent. It's very alarming. Wallahi, very alarming. Uh, you see, brothers and sisters in Islam, something that you have to believe that the source of morality in Islam. You see, this is part of the Maqasidic Tafsir that you try to educate you about the concept, what I'm talking about, why this higher aim to begin with, and uh, also to shed light on the concept of morality. We need to understand this. Morality is something which Allah decides. So Allah decides what is moral and what is not moral. It is not left to voting and democracy. Uh, I want you to open the Quran and, and read uh, the verse in Surah Al-Qalam. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you possess the highest level of character of morality look how ibn abbas radiyallahu anhum and, and when we say ibn abbas in the area of tafsir uh, hasbuk uh, how he explained it you know what he said he 
He said, what it means, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى دِينٍ عَظِيمٍ You are on the best religion. What is he trying to say, Ibn Abbas? Ibn Abbas is trying to tell us that the source of morality is revelation. And, and what confirms or affirms or substantiate that is the one who asked Aisha, radiallahu anha, Ummul Mu'mineen, كما في صحيح البخاري regarding the character of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم what did she say did you read the Quran that is it by the way never say he walk in Quran don't say that like some speakers who don't know because now you're turning you're trying to depict an attribute and say no Basically, he implemented the Quran in himself until uh, so. But if morality is left to human to decide what is moral and what is not moral, uh, then we're, 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 we're going to be in trouble. In America, in America, where, we, where I am right now, where, where we live, 100 years ago, a relationship between a man and a woman out of wedlock was not lawful, was not allowed, was not allowed. This is what we're dealing with now, because morality uh, was, was left to people to decide. Uh, what we're dealing with, we're dealing with, with LBGT, uh, QM, w, X, y, Z. You know, we're dealing with that now. We're not even talking about boyfriend and girlfriend anymore. This is also what, uh, having children out of wedlock, we're not talking about that anymore. We're talking about actually uh, abnormal uh, relationships between uh, a male and female, or between a male and a male, and a female and a female. Fa why? Because the standards of morality uh, became, uh, or, or uh, are to be decided by the people. And, and uh, the people opinion will change from time to time brothers and sisters in Islam now uh, you need to understand this uh, if, if you look at, at Surah An-Nur Surah An-Nur imagine the first two verses the first two verses uh, uh, very alarming to some people when they read them Az-Zaniyatu Az-Zani the adulteress, the, the, the female, and, 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 uh, and, and something interesting here, uh, read, As-sariq wa-sariq, az-zaniyatu wa zani You know, the, the, when it came to theft, Allah started with the male, then the female. But when it came to adultery, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with the female, az-zaniyah. Because, and this is why we're not being anti-feminine here, no. Uh, women, uh, the female, the way she dresses, the way she talks, the way she presents herself in the society, in the community, can promote this act or can stop it. And this is why also Islam interfered with her choice of clothes, with her choice of uh, adornment, with her choice of speech. When you speak, uh, be tough. Uh, don't send uh, language, uh, don't send signs through the way that you articulate yourself. Uh, again, uh, is not... And this is why, brothers and sisters in Islam, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu uh, uh, sent a letter to the Amir uh, uh, al-Kufa, uh, I believe it was Abu Musa, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, leader of al-Kufa in Iraq. Uh, in that letter is one sentence. Alimu nisa'akum Surah An-Nur. Teach your women uh, Surah An-Nur. 
In another narration, uh, which is not established, وَعَلِّمُوا رِجَالَكُمْ سُورَةَ الْمَائِدَةِ And teach your men uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah. But this, this one we cannot authenticate. But yes, Surah Al-Ma'idah has many uh, male-related kind of uh, contracts. And you just have to go back to when we explained it. Uh, Shahid brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, why adultery, and, and I really want you to understand this because uh, this is something that we have to explain to non-Muslims. Why Islam stands firm in shunning this act? Because it threatens the first block in the Muslim community, which is the family. I'll explain. You see, when the scholars looked into the commands in Islam, do this and do not do this, they came up with five areas Islam came to protect. First of all, make sure that it exists. And all the laws, we call these the five necessities. Or uh, al khams or maqasid al-shari'ah. Different terminologies, but they mean the, the holistic aims of the sharia. Number one, the protection of life. Uh, I'm sorry, the protection of the religion. Because life without religion is worthless. Because Allah created you to worship. Now, if you have life but you don't worship, what benefit? Yeah, well, nobody can take it. Uh, also, nobody, I'm not justifying taking away a life of someone who, who is not worshipping. But uh, I just want to tell you, the, uh, you see, the higher aim of your creation is to worship. So this how this have to be uh, 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 number one, the religion. Number two, life. Look at number three, the protection of the progeny. One, the word progeny, if some of you are not familiar with it, the next generation, the children who are to be born into this world. This is one way of defining that holistic aim. Two, the protection of of the lineage. Number three, the protection of the honor and dignity. And I'll explain those. I'll come back to them. But this is one aim only. And all of this is in the area of family. The protection of the family. Number four, the protection of the human intellect. That's why drinking is unlawful. Uh, smoking uh, drugs and, and, and consuming uh, uh, any substance which may intoxicate is unlawful. And then the protection of the individual asset, the wealth, the property. Let's go back to the one which where Surah An-Nur is. What do you mean the progeny? Number one, why? A sexual relationship is between a male and female because this is the only way we will maintain the recreation that's the only way we're gonna do that if if we go into these other styles of, of, of sexual intercourse which is immoral according to Islam we're going to have issue there the race of Adam would vanish in a because we're supposed what to increase we're supposed to have more this is one also the next generation the children who are born into this world they are entitled to be born into a husband, a wife, a father, a mother who are committed to the cause. 
Not a boyfriend, not a girlfriend. You're getting that? Are you getting that? You know, one of the biggest problems which threatens America that we do have a lot of children who are born into this world who do not even know their, their fathers. You see, you are violating, you are transgressing against the next generation. So this is the protection of the progeny or the uh, ch children, the next generation. Two, the protection of the lineage. Uh, you see, when I get married to someone, my child will be named after me. And, and by the way, this is why Islam considers naming yourself after someone else but your father is a major sin. And that's why when we pursue adoption, uh, we do not do like non-Muslims. You go and bring a child and you name him after you. No. We don't do that. So this is two. Because the only way to maintain an accurate uh, uh, tracing of lineage is through marriage. That children are named after their own parents. So this is two. Number three, brothers and sisters in Islam, the protection of the honor, the dignity. Brothers and sisters in Islam, no one likes adultery. And my evidence is the story of the young man, uh, Hadith Abi Umama, the Musnad uh, Imam Ahmad, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, who actually came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was sitting with his companions. Imagine, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, إِذَنْ لِي بِالزِّنَا Imagine this. A young man, I need a permission from you to commit adultery. I cannot handle my sexual drive. Imagine that. Of course, the companions uh, rebuked him, but the Prophet said, Ibn, come closer. Look at these series of questions just to, uh, 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 just to confirm the statement which I made that no one likes adultery. He said, Atarda hada li ummik. Would you like someone to do this to your mother? He said, No. He said, Well, a nas. Nobody likes this. Atarda hada li uchtik. Atarda hada li ammatik. Atarda hada li khalatik. Atarda hada li bnatik. He said, No. Oh, Hind bin Tutba, you know, when, when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took the pledge of women, there is a pledge. بيعة النساء حديث عبادة بن الصامت one of the items of البيعة that women are not to commit adultery هند said يا رسول and this is a jahili community a jahili community يا رسول الله أو تزني الحرة there is a woman who is commits adultery this is shame this is shame this is a society that was not, she was not yet, she, she, just, she, she is accepting Islam. The story of Uthman, when Khawarij, the rebels, came to kill him in his house, he said, why are you killing me? I heard the messenger of Allah says, لا يحل دم امرئ مسلم إلا في ثلاث it is not lawful to kill another Muslim except three reasons. Kufrun ba'da Islam, zinan ba'da ihsan, wa al-qatl, al-qasas. The one that, that you commit adultery while you're married. Fawallahi, look at this. Fawallahi, ma zanaytu fi jahiliyya wala fi Islam. By Allah, I have never committed adultery before Islam or after Islam. Shahid brothers and sisters in Islam, no father would like his daughter to be, and this is why one of the 
conditions for the validity of a marriage contract that the father has to consent, has to agree to this man. And, and some sisters, they call me, my father is, is out of town. I said, sister, I can't give you a marriage. How do you, how do you want to wake up in the morning as a father and somebody tells you that your daughter is with somebody? Uh, you know, uh, is not fair. It is, is transgressing the rights of another Muslims. So this will give you an understanding why, brothers and sisters in Islam, why this is extremely important, the subject of, and that's why the surah started with that. The surah started with that. But subhanallah, uh, anyone who may read that chapter, he may assume that the whole chapter is about flogging and stoning and all of that. No, actually the rest of the chapter is about how to prevent this from happening and that's why the chapter is called the nur the light how to prevent this from happening you know from happening how to prevent this from happening you know uh, subhanallah uh, first of all islam tells you we're not thirsty to flood or stone The process of uh, establishing the guilt uh, of someone uh, is, is really difficult. The, the, the only way we know it happened is people coming and confessing. Uh, and even when they come to confess committing adultery, the Prophet still told them, are you drunk? Get out of here. Get out of here. al hududa uh, uh, always try to expel the, the penal punishment in Islam, the, the flogging or the stoning with any uh, uh, reason out there, brothers and sisters in Islam, any reason out there. So that the only way is the four witnesses and four witnesses who have to see it happen, not just heard it or learned about it no they have to see the act of adultery the, the, the intercourse and i'm sorry being uh, 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 you know too much here so this is what uh, uh, you find the surah is talking about uh, also be careful don't accuse people falsely don't do that because listen if we establish that you're lying 80 floods and then comes in the story of the slander of Aisha radiallahu anha. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, you're going to enjoy this chapter. Uh, uh, I think I, I talk too long, uh, but let me introduce what I have. Again, part two will be the uh, more detailing, but let's introduce what we have here, inshallah. Uh, introduction to the chapter. Uh, introduction to the uh, chapter. Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam. The surah takes its name in Nur from verse number, uh, from verse number, uh, just give me a minute here. I'm sorry guys, I got in, I'm in school here, so somebody just came in. Okay. Uh, Surah An-Nur takes its name from verse 35, which is Allahu Nuru Samawati Wal Ard. It is number 24 in the order of the Mus'haf. This is extremely important, brothers and sisters in Islam. The Quran has two orders order of revelation and order of the Mus'haf. This is number 24 in the Mus'haf. Uh, okay, it was revealed in Medina during the sixth year following Hijrah, and it has 64 verses. 
64 verses. That is an introduction to the surah, brothers and sisters in Islam. The name of the chapter, and, and I, I really, you know, kept, you know, looking for, for something. Uh, no. Brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, let's deal with the subject uh, from the physical perspective. When we talk about Noor, there is the physical light and there is the spiritual light. Let's just deal with the physical light. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed certain elements of the universe uh, to become the source of light. Light and energy and to the human, which is the sun and the moon. So that's the physical light. Okay? Now, at dark at night, when it is dark at night, each one of us comes up with his own physical light, which suits his, you know, some people have candles, like in the desert. Some people have lamps, some people have flashlights, some people... But the shahid is, brothers and sisters in Islam, when the daylight breaks, when it is morning, do we need our physical lights, which we design to illuminate and help us see in the darkness? No. We rely on the light, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we turn off all our small pieces and we go to the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the physically. Now let's take that metaphor into the spiritual light, which is the divine light. Likewise, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you, giving you light, He enlightened you regarding dealing with marriage, regarding dealing with divorce, regarding dealing with dress code, regarding dealing with looking, regarding dealing with adultery, regarding dealing with marriage. With, okay? So why do we insist on using our own lights our own legislation when it comes to the spiritual light, the divine light, the divine guidance, and we we use our own physical French law. Imagine in, 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 in a country like Egypt, they, they, they apply the French law. What happened to the divine law? That's a light. What happened to the... Uh, uh, in, in, in many parts of the world now, they, they don't want to talk about hijab. They don't talk. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to implement it, and and so forth. A shahid, brothers and sisters in Islam, the name of the chapter has to do with what? With that light, with the divine light. Here is what I said: We all have physical light in our possession, which we utilize in darkness. When Allah's light manifested in the sun or the moon is out. We turn off our lights and use Allah's lights. Similarly, the spiritual, or likewise, the spiritual light in the area of marriage, children, relationship. Why not use the spiritual light? The concept of light conveys both an absence of darkness and a quality that will help us understand more clearly. The light of wisdom will guide us through Troubled times and challenges, brothers and sisters in Islam. So what is meant here is the divine light. The, the, the light here in, in the chapter refers to the divine light, which is the revelation from Allah to the human, which contains enlightening guidance to purify us from wickedness, uplift and empower the Muslim community. Uh, a question that is... Uh, uh, you know, it's time to ask, is an nur one of the names of Allah? Is a nur one of the names of Allah? Because a lot of people are under the impression that a nur is one of the names of Allah, which is wrong. 
there is no evidence whatsoever that uh, in nur is one of the names of Allah. What we know that in nur is like uh, Rabb. It's always followed with something like Rabbul Alameen, Rabbul Samawati Wal Ard. Likewise in nur. Allah nur of Samawati Wal Ard. Allah is the light of the, heaven, of the heavens and the earth. So certainly it's an attribute, not a name. And we know the rule. Remember when we started in the Right Believe uh, series, uh, Know Your Lord? Can we derive a name from the attribute? No, we can't. Then we're going to call Allah the blotter. Then we're going to call Allah the deceiver. Because uh, Allah blots. It's an attribute. Uh, it's an attribute, but it's not a name. It's not a name. Likewise, we cannot call uh, Allah a nur. Uh, even though if you look at the uh, books, uh, subhanallah, uh, you know, you will find some scholars actually saying it's okay. Uh, I really uh, adopt uh, uh, in my opinion, I did uh, some research on this. Uh, I adopt the opinion of uh, Sheikh Al Albani regarding this matter, and uh, also Ibn Uthaymeen, rahmatullahi ala al uh, Both of them actually see that uh, in Nur is not one of the names of Allah, rather, it's an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, calling someone Abdul Nur is not correct, is not correct, brothers and sisters in Islam. طيب. Moving forward, historical background. Surah An-Nur was revealed right after the remarkable triumph in the battle of Al-Ahzab. The enemies of Islam realized that the Muslim community uh, is uh, uh, winning, you know, the, the, the battle of Al-Ahzab. Imagine brothers and sisters in Islam, the, the whole world united to destroy Islam. And they came and they were defeated. So they noticed that the Muslim community and the way that the Muslim community stood in spite of their weakness and in spite of their uh, being outnumbered, but they stood firm in front of uh, that wave of, of troops uh, marching into Medina to destroy Islam. Yet, brothers and sisters in Islam, they stood firm out there and they, 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 uh, they simply, so that the, the, the disbelievers thought that the strength of the Muslim community in their moral, in the morality, why they love one another. What? You see, if there is adultery in the society, I'm going to hate this person because he's committing adultery with this and he's committing adultery with that. He's, he's doing this and he's doing that. He's rumor. He's backbiting. He is gossiping like the Muslim community now, unfortunately, brothers and sisters in Islam. Brother, it, it, you see, that's why the community is, 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 is dysfunctional. The Muslim community is dysfunctional because we abandon the light of morality in our lives. And that's why there is so much hate between people, between we're not following the etiquettes and the manners which the Quran brought to us. Shahid brothers and sisters in Islam, they thought the best way to attack the Muslims now is to uh, come after that moral standard, that, that standard, that high level of morality, which is uh, uh, the community, the Muslim community, uh, is 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 uh, entertaining and simply uh, try to de 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 try to, to 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 kill it, and they came up with the uh, 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 slander about Aisha radiallahu anha uh, and adultery. Imagine this, and and they came after the leader, the leader. Uh, uh, Surah An-Nur was revealed right after the remarkable. Uh, triumph in the Battle of Al-Ahzab. Uh, I think there is a typo here, but I think you got the message that the enemies of Islam realize that the Muslim community is 
uh, really successful because of the high standard of morality. And it is time to attack this area because it comprises uh, the fabrics uh, of the community from within. It destroys the fabrics. Hence, they went after the honor of the messenger. They accused his beloved wife, Aisha of adultery. Imagine that. Imagine this, brothers and sisters in Islam. And, and imagine uh, the community broke so much so that at one time, imagine the Prophet went to ask Al Ansar in the Masjid, can somebody help me? This guy is, is spreading this rumor against my wife. Can somebody help me? Imagine they started fighting one another in front of the Prophet. He left them. He left them. And, and, and subhanAllah, something amazing that, that really amazes me is, is the fact that, uh, you know, the revelation uh, stopped, did not come down for over a month. And, and some authentic narrations, 35 days. Imagine the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam was accused of adultery and there is no help from divine and the Prophet has to face that. And, 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 and the community is turning against one another. Uh, imagine uh, someone by the name of Mustah, Abu Bakr used to uh, provide for him because Aisha is the daughter of Abu Bakr. He's the one who spread the rumor. And he, Abu Bakr said, I'm not going to take care of you anymore. So the, the community, what, because of one rumor, the community what, is falling apart. This is the same community who stood facing an army of 10,000 togetherness, united. Uh, you see, and you need to understand this is what they did to the Muslim world. They went after uh, this area uh, and they started their attack uh, in, 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 the, in the first block in that wall. The first brick in the wall, which is the family. And that's why Islam, Surah An Nur, comes to deal with it. Uh, imagine the strong solidarity which was shown before, during, and after the battle of Al Ahzab uh, was almost about to be gone with the winds. I borrowed that line from the movie because of the event of the slander of Aisha. The event of Al-Ifq, which is the slander, almost destroyed the harmony of the Muslim community. The community started turning against one another. They could not even pull it together to support their messenger. As he and his beloved wife endured the most disturbing and heavyweight burden for over a month, undergoing the devastating consequences of mere and baseless rumors, brothers and sisters in Islam. طيب. I think I explained the light of morality and, and, and what the surah is about. Uh, Insha'Allah, uh, uh, today, because I'm running out of time here, I know I signed in uh, seven minutes late, uh, but like I mentioned, uh, uh, the surah, in, in simple uh, uh, words, and inshallah, we're going to continue this next uh, lecture, inshallah. Next Wednesday, we're going to have part two, and probably part three from of that surah because it's extremely important. So the surah deals with the subject of 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 uh, uh, adultery being the threat to the family, to the Muslim home. But then, you know, uh, like I said. Islam does not uh, uh, call on rushing into accusing people of adultery and, and flogging and stoning without determining uh, their guilt and how to determine it. Uh, ideally, confession. If not, you have to produce four witnesses. Uh, and then Islam offers the precautionary measures and, and that's what I want you to look at look at these precautionary measures look at this uh, asking permission to enter uh, making marriage uh, uh, simple 
lowering your gaze, uh, fight uh, prostitution in the society, in the community, encourage hijab and modesty, fight the spread of shamelessness, shameless uh, and gossip, limit the punishment of adultery to those who restrict it. Uh, inshallah, like I said, uh, that's a good start for the surah. I will, uh, inshallah, present uh, slides next uh, uh, session. And I will stick to the slides because if I talk away from the slides, I normally uh, get off subject and, and uh, I want this to be uh, the same style we followed with the rest of the surahs, inshallah. But this should excite you, inshallah, uh, to uh, uh, become interested in in uh, learning about the surah, uh, especially the sisters, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam. The surah is considered the constitution of the Muslim home. And guess who will uh, uh, enforce that constitution? Is the wife. Uh, that is why, uh, you know, uh, uh, sisters must know the secrets of this surah, inshallah, and not only know it, rather implement it as well, baby Nahna. So if you have any questions, you can call, but uh, for now, inshallah, if you want to um, uh, go ahead and and, uh, and uh, post your question. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, how are you? That's Hassan Ali, good to have you. Janine, wa alaikum salam. Ana il, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, I'm still trying to see if there's any questions here. What are the effects of overeating spirituality physically from the books of scholars? Uh, maybe that's in another uh, question and answer session, inshallah. Ask Imam Karim live show on Sunday. Maybe we'll answer that. But let's try to limit this uh, to the higher aims, the maqasidik. Uh, Ibrahim Muhammad, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Uh, Janine, if there is any question, brothers, just go ahead and ask, inshallah, otherwise, uh, Sister Noura Rashid from Australia, good to have you, Sister Noura. Uh, Sheikh, uh, I don't even, uh, okay, let me see here, uh, alhamdulillah, the straight path, uh, Ibrahim, assalamu alaikum, Sister Fatima from Illinois, wa alaikum salam. Uh, okay, Yassin, uh, I don't see any questions. I'm going through the. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Let me see here. Okay. Uh, what to do when the father of the girl, whom do not agree, whom our Muslims only agree to dating? Then this father is wicked man. Uh, you know, any father had he dayata. We call this the youth. Someone like this, Allah is not going to look at him. They just do it. Uh, okay, inshallah. Jazakumullah khaira. Okay, brothers, alhamdulillah, we did good. Jazakumullah khaira. Inshallah, we'll see you uh, uh, Sunday. This Sunday, I, we have Mufti Munir, Ibn Munir. Uh, the question and answer, inshallah. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Inshallah, we're going to try to fix that Zoom business. جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فت فؤادك الأيام فتا وتنحت جسمك الساعات نحتا وتدعوك المنون دعاء صدق ألا يا صاح أنت أريد أنت أراك تحب عرسا ذات خدر أبت طلاقها الأكياس بتا تنام الدهر ويحك في غطيط بها حتى إذا مت انتبهتا فكم ذا أنت مخدوع وحتى متى لا ترعوي عنها وحتى أبا بكر دعوتك لو أجبت إلى ما فيه حظك لو عقلت إلى علم تكون به إماما مطاعا إن نهيت وإن أمرت ويجلو ما بعينك من غشاها ويهديك السبيل إذا ضللت وتحمل منه في ناديك تاجا ويكسوك الجمال إذا عريتا ينالك نفعه ما دمت حيا ويبقى ذكره لك إن ذهبتا هو العضب المهند ليس ينبو تصيب به مقاتل من أردتا 
وكنز لا تخاف عليه لصا خفيف الحمل يوجد حيث كنت 